Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome to another installment of the 5 o'clock reboot. Oh yeah. Making sure that I'm actually still getting picked up, <laughs> because it loves doing that. Uh, welcome to another installment of the 5 o'clock reboot, where we will be starting your week off right. Absolutely correct. I hate using headphones, but I love using them, because I can hear myself, but it also operates as a speech jammer, sometimes. Yeah? It's bad. Oh yeah, because like you're talking and like you hear yourself and it kind of makes you like, <laughs> yeah. So I'll start stumbling over my words on occasion. You know, I was, whenever I was, uh, whenever I was singing, uh, is anyone going to San Antonio? Uh, it was really fucking with my rhythm because I was like, is any, and then it's like, I start it and then there's a second. It's like falling close behind like that one guy that's just following you just a little too close. You can feel him breathing and he just doesn't back away. Yeah, I feel him breathing, and I'm like, dude, call your insurance company. We're at a red light. Literally. But today, to follow up on our Oktoberfest finasco, I went with another Oktoberfest. As we know, uh, last week went so wonderful. <laughs> and this one will be no different for me. Uh, Have you tried is, this? Huh? Have you tried this? Yes. Oh, damn. I tried it before I bought it. But uh, this is Yeehaw's Oktoberfest. Uh, the seasonal lager that they produce. Uh, now, Oktoberfest is something that I want to help you out with next week. Um, we're going to move away from Oktoberfest. Okay. I put this into consideration. What about getting just... German beer. Well, you see, I wasn't planning on getting an Oktoberfest like beer. I was I was planning on like shopping around and going to some different places and finding something that looks like it would be ballin. I was thinking like German. A, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like it I mean of course it'd be like some kind of German thing, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it wasn't gonna be like one of these like Hell yeah, we're, you know, celebrating October, so let's make a limited batch and call it Oktoberfest. Like, nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, we, we have already drank uh, a German cider, which was the Bambel. And it was ballin'. Ballin'. Like, I, I want to do that again. I, I was considering for our anniversary, we go down memory lane shot for shot shot for shot we we would die maybe it's only like 40 some odd shots now yeah that's only 40 some odd shots it's only 40 some odd shots it's only you know a cloud going maybe 40 miles an hour on the way up you know, to the maker after we drink this. I mean, hey, but like I said before, I'm not a big fan of it. Oh my God. You've committed the blasphemy. You've committed the sin. Oh, fuck. It's okay because now we're even. <laughs> <laughs> I am here <clears throat> for the opening of the can. I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't know about boosting it that much. Boosting it a little. Too much. I don't know about that one. No, I didn't like that. I didn't like that too much. I'll Especially because at the back end of it, like whenever you peel the thing back, it kind of sounded like somebody throwing up. Because it was like... And then it went... <sighs> well, I'll leave an indicator if I threw up whenever I edit this. <laughs> there it is right there. I really hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a very... 
texture oriented person. If I see someone throwing up, I'm fine. If you feel it. If I feel it, it's, it's done. Because first off, they'd be throwing up on me. Then I smell it. I see it. I hear it. We're done. Lunch? What's that? Don't remember. <laughs> Lunch? What's that? It's on the floor. That's right there. First one's free. First one's free. Way better than the Sam Adams. Actually, yeah. Beats the fuck out of Sam Adams. Uh, let's see here. Oktoberfest seasonal lager. Marzen style? I don't Mars know what that word means. style lager. Uh, 6% alcohol by volume and a 12 ounce can. Brewed in Johnson City, Tennessee. That's right. Yeah, I, I think it is better than Samuel. The can says, a traditional multi german style lager. Our Mars and Oktoberfest is one... Oh, there it is. Is one seasonal you'll wish would stick around longer. The heart of this beer is the Munich, M Munich malt. And you'll love how the clean, rich, toasty flavors mingle with the ever so light hop bitterness. It's a fall favorite that you might find yourself craving all year long. You'll God, say it when you drink it. Brewing Company. <sighs> Brewing Company. <laughs> Brew. <laughs> Brew. <laughs> My fucking... That would be such a good meme. Guy just cracks a beer. Fucking... Brew. You'll say it when you drink it. All right. <sighs> Brew. <laughs> I actually that. So this is something completely off topic. Cans are configured in a certain way. This is what we call a commercial can. Yes. Right. Because where the mouth is from where I'm holding it, you see the logo. Most of these other ones, the label's going to be like here or on the back at a weird angle. Brew. Brew. Um, that's not happening for me, but I think it's because I'm left-handed. Well, I mean, try it. Try with the other hand. Yeah, see how it's off? Yeah. Brew. 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 To brew. To brew. May she rest in fucking peace. Well, pieces from the accident. We'll never find the killer. But anyway. Anyway, uh, my lawyer says I don't answer questions. Yeah, you shouldn't answer questions. <clears throat> you know, you do have the right to remain silent whenever they arrest you. Listen, just because I was kicking and screaming saying that, that the aliens probed me was not me admitting to guilt. No, you see, from the body cam footage, the issue wasn't you kicking and screaming saying, the aliens probed me. The issue is where you said, I did it. You know what I mean? That's where they really... Got you. We'll see. Now you got it off the mark. Um, it, I didn't say that I did it. I said, and I quote, I'll fucking do it again. Shit. <sighs> well, we're looking for a new co-host here on the 5 o'clock reboot for about 10 to 20 years, possibly <laughs> life. 10 to 20 years. Uh, call us at 888-888-888. 8-8. Or join the Discord and we'll talk to you right there immediately. 888-888-8888. Yes. I was about to do the thing that usually gets us banned. <laughs> oh. No, I figured out. I think that's what it is. I really think it's the... Yeah. 
Is it? Do you think it's that? Maybe. Well, I guess we'll find out here in a second. Yeah. Yes. 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 Holy shit. It's still a brew, man. <laughs> brew. Brew. <laughs> I need that to be a shirt. I need that to be a shirt right now. Brew. <laughs> brew. Brew. We get in touch with Yeehaw. If they would let us use a Yeehaw can on a t-shirt with the 5 o'clock reboot, I would 100% drink more Yeehaw products. Brew. Brew. The official, the official, the official podcast of the, Yeehaw Brewing the, Company. The official beer Brew. of the 5 o'clock reboot. Brew. Brew. I won't lie, I do love their ciders. Their ciders are pretty schmacking. Bro. I like a lot of their beer, too. They have a killer dunkle. Bro. There you go. Bro. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Come on. So. <clears throat> ah, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, it's a... I feel like I'm doing like some sort of Obama thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> bro. Uh, let me be clear. Bro. Uh, bro. Michelle. Michelle. Check out this. Bro. He's over here like, why don't you drink another one? And he's just sitting over here. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what I would, I would love to see. What, what president would you love to see just absolutely sloshed? Mm. Can I go back and like you, any point? Any in time? president. Any president. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln? Four score. Fuck. <laughs> no. 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 I take it back. I would give anything to see Teddy Roosevelt fucking Teddy hammered. <laughs> the teddy bears. Yeah, I made this shit. It was because uh, I didn't kill a bear. So, do you want to know why we were called the Rough Riders? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why they call us Rough Riders? Teddy, please. The third time, all right? I, I'm i not interested. Stop it. It's because we like to be ridden hard and put away wet. It's because when I was on my way to Texas, it was a rough ride. I was on my way to Texas, and I broke a glass bottle on my saddle. I didn't think to take it off, so we just rode. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking about what president I would like to see. Absolutely hammered. I know Barack Obama is one of them. I would love to see oh, that, that man. Would be something. That I think it would be. I don't know. Most of our presidents are kind of up there, so getting them too drunk might kill them. Yeah. I don't know. Bush might be funny. Bush drinking Bush? Bush drinking Bush. There you go. <laughs> There's your official plan. There you go. Welcome to the 5 o'clock reboot. Come on in, drink some Bush, and we'll see what happens. Shit. Could you imagine? I'm trying to think of something that he would say. I know he's not a president, but Benjamin Franklin would be kind of kind of kind of funny. Can you imagine? He just gets so drunk, he just walks outside with like fifteen kites, and fifteen little little keys attached to him. Like, look what I could do! Just gets just. <laughs> We've all done some like stupid shit or dangerous shit, drunk man. Oh my god! What's the dumbest thing you ever did, drunk? Uh, let me think. Number one, my lawyer says I don't have to answer questions. That was a test. <laughs> and that was the line that I would throw in while I could think of a legal story to tell you. Um. <laughs> now, the most dangerous thing that I've done while drunk was... Now, I was hammered was I climbed up on the roof of a camper in the middle of the night in a park of campers. 
whipped my little dinger out and pissed in front of God and everybody. I think this may be a familiar story. I believe it is. Now, that's one of the dumbest things that I've ever done. The other dumb thing that I've done was getting hammered and playing hide and seek in that same little trailer park. And looking around for like 45 minutes while the guys were like chilling in the heat. You know what I'm saying? It was like cold. Like it was cold outside. And I was like, I got you now. And I was like looking up and under people's campers. It was like You're like clawing up into their understock? No, I was. I was like going all around. And uh, this one guy, you know, like he can make a really good like cricket noise. And I was like, okay. So I would hear a cricket and I'd be like, there he is. It was a real fucking cricket. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm chasing that bitch. Run all the way up this big grassy hill to the other part of the park, you know, and I walk around there for a while. And they're like, dude, where the fuck are you? Like, they called me. They said, where are you? I said, I am right on your tail. I'm that's, hunting you down. That's where I am because I am a professional. And a master tracker. Oh, yeah. Um, And they said, no, you're not. We're inside. You should come in before you, like, you know freeze. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to get you now. And then I went inside and I was like, I found you. Uh, let's see here. One time while I was over here, I did uh, put my hand on a uh, striped hornet's nest and get stung. Yeah, you did do that. That was pretty stupid, but to be fair. Yeah, you didn't really see it. I didn't see it. But I felt it first. I felt it and I was like, what's this spongy thing on your rail? And then my finger hurt really bad. Like, bad. And I was like, ah. And you didn't really even react either. You just went, ah. It got stung. <laughs> you didn't react. You were just like, ah. Wasps. Well, there ain't no use crying over, you know. A, a stung finger. A stung finger. It's used cussing over it, though. It makes you feel really good. I'll say, so, I'm, I'm super weird about it. I don't, I don't curse wherever I'm in pain. I just kind of just go, ah, I make really weird noises. Did I just make art? I think you did make art. I made art. <laughs> but, um, uh, the other day, I was opening boxes and the uh, the cardboard got away from me, and whoop, right on my cubicle here. You got a cardboard cut right right on the base of my fingernail. Oh. So it just stripped back all that flesh, and all I could say was, "Mmm, mmm." <laughs> it was it was straight up to like it was so bad that. I just didn't even know what words to say. They're like, what's going on? And mind you, it cut deep. It was bleeding profusely. Like it slashed me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I was like, uh, I need some, I need some, I need some alcohol for this. They're like, what do you mean? Like you can't drink on shift. And I was like, oh, it's not for drinking. Like, what do you need it for? I said, just Give me the higher proof alcohol and just give it to me. It's for dunking. They said, okay. And so I got it. And I took the little lid off and went, boop. And I went, <laughs> mistakes were made. I think we should keep the echo that you're going to have in because I feel like it will 100% add to the effect. <laughs> it was very internal for a period of time. Just, <laughs> dude, I hated cardboard cuts. At the warehouse I used to work at, uh, we had these, uh, like, I've cut myself on cardboard there. I, I remember we had this non-stick, like, non-slip paper. That shit was thick. Thick. That would gash you. Like, you would, like, if you cut yourself on that. was like that, particle paper? Yeah, it would, yeah. like, it would cut you deep. And I remember, like, I was, uh, we were about to take the paper back over to, like, reuse it, you know, because we're environmentally friendly, by God. And somewhat. We're not. Well, actually, my place was very environment. Like, our, even our old slop, we, like, sold to farms around here for feed. 
um, and fertilizer. But <laughs> oh shit, it's got teeth. Forgot to tell you. <laughs> That's what gets us fucking banned. <laughs> the panic. <laughs> I um. So for work, we are also able to dress up for Halloween. I do have to scrap my original idea. Don't have enough time or money. I understand. But we are my original plan because I recently watched Moon Knight. I know that Tennessee is like a big thing for moonshine. What? My original idea was Moonshine Night. Why don't you call it Shine Night? I thought it would have been funnier to call it Moonshine Night. Because Shine Night wouldn't make as much sense if you didn't like immediately understand what the thing was coming from. But like Moon Night, Moonshine Night. Ah. But I plan to re- replace like all the linen with denim. You were... Denim cape? Denim cape, denim clothes. Denim hood. Denim hood, denim mask. Denim. Why? Uh. Uh-huh. You're going to be funny. like that uh Like after Mario goes down the tube. That's how he's going to be, wasn't it? Denim 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 denim. <laughs> Uh, uh, get out. <laughs> Listen, I gave you a good one earlier. You did. That was actually really funny. Very, very funny. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, we're talking about fidget toys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which... Well, that... Never mind. That's a personal item. Wallet? Yes, yes my wallet. I got a new wallet. New wallet. Behold. Uh, new wallet. Uh, pretty fancy. Goes like this. Goes opens like this, and then I can actually it opens. Sorry, I I don't want to show you my personal information here, but it it opens like this, and it's held in place. Uh, it's not as impressive if you don't see what it does, but like it holds money and my card on the other side. But uh, if I let go of it here, it just simply, whoop, it rotates. Makes for a nice little little fidget toy. Because I could just sit here and fidget with it. It's very cool. Yeah, I need to find another fidget toy before I get fired. That was funny. <laughs> it also holds my official ordainment card. Everyone always forgets that I'm ordained. Every now and then. Like to bust this bad boy out and be like, I'm here. Uh, Jesus. You're over here. In reality, you are a cleric, I see. Yep. I'm a legal cleric. Legal cleric. If you were to, like, define what you are by D&D class standards, what like class or classes would you be? Low level bard. Yeah. I would say very much a low level bard. That, that's me. Because we're both entertainers. One thing I can't do is play, like, well, I, I mean, I can play piano, but like, I can't really play any other instrument. And I don't know about you, but I'm not exactly walking around with a piano on my hip. But. Yeah, no, I would say low level, low level bard because he, he's, he's got vicious mockery. I'm not gonna lie to you, my roast game's pretty on, what the kids say, on fleek. I don't think he'll. I don't. I don't think. <laughs> speech jammer. I don't know if they still say that, but my smite, my roasting game is on fleek. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess. Like, without stroking my ego too hard, I guess I have some kind of charisma. If not, if not that, I can't, I, I'm good at pickpocketing. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm good at pickpocketing. Bro, that's a, bro, that's a, 
That's a thief skill. That's a rogue skill, bro. Yeah. I also walk really quiet on accident. Rogue? So, I mean, if if Bard isn't one, then I guess my fallback would be rogue. I could pick locks. I think you're a multi-class bar rogue bard. <laughs> but I can also do magic tricks. Wizard. <laughs> Wizard. Wizard. Did you go to school for these magic tricks, or is it something that you just kind of learned on your own? I just kind of learned it on my own. Sorcerer. Or, oh. <laughs> now I'm just imagining a sorcerer. You're like up against someone like Strahd, and you're just like... Pick a card. Is this your card? Yes. <laughs> As if that's how Strahd would react. <laughs> Speaking of which, when are we getting the gang back together? This is know. something I've been trying to find out for so long. Adam has been so damn busy. I mean, we can't blame him for being busy. He is a busy man. He is a busy man. But he's got to make time for the boys. We're cracking open a cold one with the boys. Yeah. And then after we die, they're going to be cracking some boys open with the cold ones. Yeah. So, like, you know, as they say, hit while the iron's hot. Strike while the iron's hot, yeah. Strike while the iron's hot. Yes, sir. Call back to last episode where we spent an hour and ten minutes talking about old phrases. I regret nothing. That was so much I, fucking I will say, fun. very, very intuitive and incentivizing because now our vocabulary... We have meaning behind what we say. Yeah. Instead of just taking it from the horse's mouth, we're we're fucking we're we're taking the horse's mouth, removing it, putting it on our face, and saying it. Yeah. And the children are mortified. Absolutely. Just the um, way I like it. Um. There's the band. Children being mortified. <laughs> no, the way you like it. I like children being mortified. That's what you said. Oh. Yeah. Pervert. Oh, yeah, I'm a day. In time. Speaking of that, I've been learning Japanese. I'm actually planning on learning Japanese. I'm uh, I'm on Duolingo. Uh, kind of fucking around with that. But like, since it's an Eastern language, uh, and it's so much different than anything that we know. Um, but to be fair, English is the hardest language to learn. And we haven't exactly mastered the English language, but... And that's true. We do speak it. Now, here's the thing about the English language, right? It's because of how it's used casually. Yeah. If it's used properly, then it, like, makes sense. It's like... Like, this thing is good but now I come in like if it's something that like I love it's like oh man this game is really good man like it's it's got me down bad well see that's slang though that's using other words so in English language <laughs> the proper way of saying things is like using enunciation to produce what you're saying so that people can understand you properly. But you're talking about that for the learning the language. Learning the language doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with pronouns, conjunctions, all these other things that don't make any fucking sense to any other language. Because, like, uh, there, there's... Like G somehow becoming J in certain words, like pledge. Yeah, and O U G H being U. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's those small things. Cause I actually was wa I watch um, Electra Boom. He said some word, I don't remember what it was, but he like pronounced it the way that it was spelled, but not the way that it's said. Right. So I think that's what it is. But see, we we have used the hardest language for for our whole lives practically besides the few years that we use gibberish um 
I always tell people that I'm bilingual, by the way. They're like, oh, what language do you know? I'm like, uh, English and uh, gibberish. Because you spoke that fluently as a child. You did. So, I'm bilingual. No thanks, Duolingo. I already speak too. Change the name of your app for Triolingo. For whenever he gets on it. Already there. Uh, I haven't been learning. Uh, I've been trying to learn Japanese. And I'm trying to learn. Uh, trying to learn. Trying to learn. Uh, things like. Uh, I want to learn Russian. I want to learn. Uh, Cantonese, Mandarin. Just a bunch of different languages. I want to become like a walking. <laughs> I want to become a walking Rosetta Stone. Basically. But I also because I want to go to Japan. I would like to go to Japan, but before I go there, I, I believe in a simple philosophy. If you go to a country to tour there, at least be conversational. Be able to hold a conversation. If you need something, you can ask for it. Yeah, like, you don't have to be, like, a master, like, translator for that language. You know what I mean? Just at least to where you could, you, if you're hungry, you should be able to tell this person that you're hungry. If you want to buy something, how much is this? If you need to go to the fucking bathroom, where's the bathroom? Yeah. Uh, I kind of keep that on a bit of a leeway in America because America is known as a melting pot. Yeah. This is where everyone wants to come, man. There's some people where English isn't their first language, and that's awesome. Yeah. Because that means that we are further diversifying the country that was made to be Diverse. the melting pot. Yeah. So I, I leave it on a little bit of slack. Sometimes I get really agitated about it. I won't lie. Because you'll get people who just don't speak a lick of English and then they're asking you about product and you're just like, what? And you explain it to them and they're like going completely awry from what you've just said. And you're just like, no, 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 please. Shh, 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 my child. Look at the thing. Look at it. Buy it. <laughs> well, to be fair, as you said, English is one of the hardest languages, especially like we like we had like brought up about not just speaking but like written. Oh you yeah, know what I mean because I, I I was learning a little bit of Gaelic there in the past, um, and whenever you directly translate it English to Gaelic, the phrases are fucked. Oh, like. That hinding is bad. It's probably because it's been sitting out, but... God, that was... Like, for example, if you wanted to say... They drink water, right? For us, like, for English speakers, that makes... Like, it makes sense when you hear it, because it's like... Who's doing what? They. They? What do they do? Drink. What are they drinking? Water. They drink water. Wow. But when you translate that phrase to Irish Gaelic... It's Olin Shiad Ishka, which means drink they water. Which is redneck for drink the water. Or a fella who's trying to speak old English and he's fucking up saying drink thy water, drink thy water. Drink thy water. Bitch. I don't know. I have, I've had... It, it, I mainly just hit blocks, right? So like... Just my my journey in this life so far, I get inspiration for things. I want to do that thing, but there's a problem. Money, time. I don't have any of that, so I can't do that. So it immediately just, it just hits this block, and then I can't do it. But then I'm like, I need to do this thing. So for example, the gym. I've been wanting to go to the gym for years. Never wanted to. Finally started doing it. Finally took it seriously. Then out of nowhere, wow, oh, now I'm doing it. Now I've got these meat pies. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's finally gotten to that point where I, I'm i 25. Yeah. I'm a quarter of the way through my life now. I need to start going out and doing stuff. That includes that I need to start going to check out different places. Because America is a big place. Yeah. But the world is bigger. Mm -hmm. Then... They're going to launch my ass into space and say, good luck, Charlie, as I go and try to discover new life elsewhere. I hate this planet. <laughs> oh, my God. 
that I saw a college humor skit about that. Well, not about sending people to space, but like this place being kind of fucked. Does it even have cat girls? They exist in our minds. Most important place of all. Yeah. I know she's not a cat girl, but still got to think about Raftalia. Let me tell you something. Tell me something, son. Demi humans in general. Always good in my mind. Always. Always. Can you imagine how fluffy that tail is? I haven't thought about it. Straight up, I've not thought about it. I bet that shit fluffy as shit. Because <laughs> first off, it's not unkept fur, right? It's right. attached. She, she keeps up with it. Yeah, it's attached to a human who would care about their self-image. So, clearly, would take care of it. Could you imagine... How soft that bitch must be. It's like touching a cloud. Probably like one time out of... It's probably soft like one time out of ten though because you gotta think, the other nine times, shit soaked in blood. Of, of her enemies. Fluck it. Fluck it? Fluck it. You gotta touch it anyway. I mean, With consent. I mean, of course you... Of course I touch it. Jesus. What do you think I am? Some man with restraint? With consent. I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, with consent. Then you have restraint. Okay, I do have restraint because <laughs> of consent, but hear me out. <clears throat> I have the restraint to be like, I won't touch it if you don't want me to. But I don't have the restraint to not be like, hey... Could I possibly? Could I possibly, milady, my fair maiden, fondle that tail for like a solid fondle? five seconds? I would not word it like that. <laughs> you, know what, you gotta use a fondle's not an endearing term. No. May I please? But even saying something else would just sound weird. Could I fluff your tail? No. Could I touch it? Mm, no. Yeah. I just. At that point, you just kind of like gesture at it, like, can I? Even then. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, you've realized that you that the goal that How you want. How do you word this without making it sound weird? I don't think there is a way. I don't know why we're stressing about this so much. Like they're around the corner. They might be. We don't know. That's true. So maybe we should be thinking about this. That's, I'm, that's what I'm saying, man. We gotta figure this shit out. How this do you we word? do it at the five o'clock, man? We solve. Pro we drink and we solve problems. We solve problems before they start. How do you ask to touch a demi human's tail without making it sound? Too invasive. And without making it sound sexual, because it doesn't have to be sexual. Correct. I ain't trying to grab that thing to fucking nut in. Yeah. And that's what's going to get us banned. Yeah. Yeah. As far as you haven't been yet. Anyway. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Um. I mean, to be fair, if you were just casual, like, can I pet your tail? She probably wouldn't think too much about it. But I think the context is what's the most important. If you're in your bedroom alone and you're like, Rough Talia, can I pet your tail? Might sound a little sexual. But assuming, assuming you two are in a room alone together, one would think you would be close enough to where you could touch it if you wanted to. You mean like close enough as like in friends, right? Yeah. Now, with, with proper like, you know, warning, right? Because you can't just be like. Exactly. We got to put, we got to put this, we got to relate this to like human to human terms. Yeah. That would be like me. 
even though, like because number one we don't know if it's a, we're getting very technical now yeah we don't know if this is an erogenous zone that is true because nine times out of ten it is really? in most anime An anime i was about to say i don't know much about animals are there <laughs> <laughs> no uh, maybe i don't know but for in like anime if you're touching a tail the girl is like losing her mind really she, she's like in full mind break mode like you're are you serious yeah same with the tail uh, same with the ears ears yeah uh so don't judge me on this i was just talking about it earlier uh senko the helpful fox right yes for context so that it doesn't make me sound like a complete creep uh it is an anime about a fox spirit who literally looks like a child but she's 800 years old which is still not a valid argument still looks like a child okay wrong we're common grounds here but while he's like petting her tail she's like losing it hmm and then he's like, can I touch her ears? And she's just, she's losing it. Uh, but then he accidentally sticks his fingers in her, ear, in her ears. And then it gets really weird. She like, she does not like that. <laughs> he's, he's like, they're so soft. What would happen if I put my fingers in? And she just, she, she's not excited by it. Quite the opposite. Uh, Maybe I can say this quietly enough to where TikTok won't ban us. It's like putting it in the wrong hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but then, what was it seen on from, from Sword Art Online that he touched her tail and she also got like super embarrassed? Um, Monster Musumi. I will straight up, I will say this. I've not seen that anime. I have it. But when I was in college, I have a buddy who was mad for Monster Musume. I was like, you know, I went in there, you know, he had told me something about it and I was like, oh, that's, I mean, that sounds pretty interesting. And then like, I ended up going to his room and he got his roommate into it. So like I went in there and his roommate was just full on laying in his bed, covered up at four in the afternoon, watching monster moose me. Um, uh, <coughs> I will say too, I'm a degenerate. Wow. I am a degenerate. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take this off. I can, I can hear myself. I know my mic is working. And I can hear myself. It's at a proper gain level. I just need to remember to be speaking into the mic at all times. <coughs> need to make sure that I'm speaking into the mic at all times, so I don't get speech jammed anymore. Yeah. There it went. You might want to make sure that's recording. Because last the, the last episode where it was like, hey, we lost a bunch of shit was when something fell. Take a, we'll take a quick break. Uh, How long has that been not been making sounds? Yeah, oh. Well, while we check on this situation, <coughs> has it been, uh, are you able to check out, see how long it's been recording? We'll find out next week. Oh. 
We're in it. We're here for good. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, uh, I'm a degenerate. Um, so uh, I have a game called uh, Orc Massage. I believe I may have shown you this. Tell me about it. Yes, and and yes, yes. Um, and in Orc Massage, uh, it is a game where you are an orc and you massage clientele. So it's like a really pure thing, right? Like it's all like, oh man, you like. You help my back. Like you I'm massage able to go them and down. then you fuck them. Now, okay, but like you're so you're an orc and you have your clientele. So it's like humans and like maybe elves, right? Demi humans. Okay, so maybe a cat girl, right? Yes. Oh, okay, cat girls and humans. And harpies. Like, anyway. <laughs> like the birds? Yeah. Have I not showed you this game? You showed me a little bit. Yeah. Now, the harp. Her zones are her wings. Okay. And the well, she's a tiger girl, so I guess she's technically not a, a cat girl per se, but she is a a feline esque creature. Um her zones are the base of her tail and her tail. Okay. Okay. So I'm assuming that based off of that, that's what that is. So I um, Th that makes it more difficult now because at what point is it okay to touch the tail? If is it because it, if it if it's a sexual thing, I don't think it's something you could just outright do with your buddy unless you're like buddies with hardcore benefits. Well, but at the same time, maybe it's not maybe it's not erotic. Maybe it's just embarrassing. Because tail's pretty vital, right? Tail tail helps maintain balance and things like that. Not to say that they're using that for balance, but maybe it's a delicate area for them to maintain their balance for some weird unknown reason. I mean, it could be. And if it's an embarrassment thing, then, like, you would definitely... Like, if it's not sexual and it's just embarrassment, if you're friends with this person for a very long time... I feel like it would 100% be like something that you guys probably would have talked about. And mm. you could be like, yo. Let me touch that tail. Nobody's looking right now. Nobody's going to think about this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, can I please, can I please just let my finger rest upon that? <laughs> could you please just... Uh, uh, <laughs> Hold on, I want this to be a magic moment for both of both of us. Uh, hocus pocus, let me stroke us that tail. <laughs> that, that, that at that point, if she lets you, she's gonna she's gonna let you do a lot more than stroke that tail, buddy. Hocus pocus, let me stroke us that tail. And then speaking of which. I hear tell that you have some pretty magical powers too. Could you please hocus pocus stroke us, my docus, please? Stroke us, my long neck diplodocus. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I need to quit. I need to quit. I need a new host, please. Someone, someone, please. I don't want to. I don't want to be here anymore. In fact, the diplodocus is a long neck <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> it's one of them dinosaurs with the long necks. It's giving me a lot to think about. Another long neck dinosaur is uh <laughs> the Stegosaurus. Believe it or not, no. The Stegosaurus had like fins and shit. Is that the Stegosaurus? Yeah. Uh and 
What's the long necky bull? Uh, you may be thinking of an apatosaurus, which is what I was going to say uh, was would come in very handy with a uh, masseuse because you could be like, my back kind of hurts. Uh, could you please apatosaurus? Or you walk in there and you're like, yo, you walk into a chiropractor because you're Spinosaurus. My sister, Sarah, uh, she's a very kind somebody, but uh, especially like whenever I was thinking about getting into cross dressing because uh, it really helped me try Sarah's tops. Which got really awkward because my girlfriend Sarah, um, she wasn't really into it, but she was still down to, you know, kind of go down, which uh, was really nice because I did get to try Sarah's tops. I try Sarah's top. Yeah. I don't think we can be friends anymore. I don't think, I think this was it. I think this is the breaking point. Did you hear about Rocky Balboa's really big uncle? Titanoboa. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Here's the day. This is why we can't have nice things, folks. You get a man who gets a laugh once and he just drags it. He runs with it until his feet bleed. I'm going to be running a marathon. What? Totally unrelated. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, I'm doing a 5K. Hopefully sometime in November. That's a bit of news, I guess. Dude, nice. Uh, I, Are you training I mean, for it, like, actively? Uh, no, uh, but I should be. Um, but I decided that I want to start getting into running as well as general all-around fitness. Um, um, <clears throat> but um, my mom... Those five Ks, uh, she likes it. She doesn't really, she doesn't jog it. She more or less just walks it. Um, but I like to jog it. I like to actually like push myself to to run this out because I can do. I can. You've seen me. I, I used to do cardio for forty five minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Turns out to be a bad thing, uh, but I used to do cardio for forty five minutes a day, uh, where I would just run. Why? I don't know. You know, I had wondered. Cause like whenever I would run with you, I was like, bro, I'm going to run for 20 minutes and like cool down for a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, no, but I guess it was more or less pushing through the, the mental side of it too. Cause my legs were killing me. Yes. And I was like, I'm not stopping. I'm not going to stop. I don't want to. Uh, we did do a bit of a, bit of a cardio thing the other day where we just kind of, it was, it was not jogging. But it wasn't walking. It was like right at the cusp of where you need to jog. So you were just speed walking uh, for 15 straight minutes. Okay. Not a good time. Yeah. Was there an incline? 1.5. Okay. Now, now you got me. See, because at first I was like, speed walking for 15 minutes. I was like, that's, I mean, that's not bad. Y you think that. When you throw that incline in there. Even, even, even without the incline. Because Cause like if you go if you speed walk you stop at a certain point, especially after fifteen minutes. This was fifteen minutes of straight speed walking. Yeah, just like not hauling ass, but not skittering. Not enough to be like, like just <laughs> yeah. So there's there's a, a the way that you can tell if it's a jog. Or a speed walk. Speed walk, you can carry a conversation, right? Yeah. You can't really 
But I think I think it's you can carry a conversation and you may be able to sing. If you're jogging, no. Walking, you can walk and sing. Before you can jog, it's walking, talking, and not able to sing. Jogging is where you can't talk either. That's a full sprint. Yeah, whenever I was running, I wasn't able to really talk to you guys. Yeah. Like, you'd be listening to music or something, I'd be like, this is what I'm listening to. <laughs> but, like... And then you played Dan Heim, and <laughs> Seriously? That was an excellent find. If you're like jogging or doing anything like that, it really helps me get into it. And like, cause like I did like mentally I'm somewhere else whenever I'm like jogging on a treadmill or something. Oh yeah. Because if I'm just jogging on a treadmill, I don't want to like feel like I'm jogging on a treadmill. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to like think and just like look down and be like, ah, yes, I'm not going anywhere. So like, I'll take myself elsewhere in my mind, which is one of the reasons I started doing those rolling hills whenever I was doing those. I haven't been running as much going to the gym. I've just been like straight up hard lifting. But um, like I would do the rolling hills and I'd be like, ah, and like mentally I would create like these scenes that I was running through. And I'm like, ah, yes. Good, that good. My ancestry is calling. My ancestry. Yeah, like, just the, the emerald, the emerald isles. Oy. I, uh, whenever I'm running, I, I typically will, will go into my head. There's, there's a lot that I, I have to think about lately. And so, um, especially while running, I would just go into my own head and just, it, it became like almost meditative for me where I would just be running and my brain would just, I would recede into my own mind and I would just start thinking about things. And it was awesome because while I would sit there and think, uh, it, it gave me kind of a clarity because whenever you're running, you're exerting yourself. So you can't really make things up, but you also can't rationally think. Right. So it kind of meets in that nice little area where whatever idea seems good at the time, you ponder it for a second. If your morals immediately say yes or no, that's the way you take the branch. Yeah. So that's kind of how it went for me for a little bit. I... I had a lot to think about these past couple of months. So doing doing jogging and, and being able to actually do that put a, a lot of things into per, 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 per perspective. Yeah. Which is good. So uh, my mind's a whole lot more clear whenever I jog. I feel better after jogging because I do some heckin' meditation. So it helps. It, it helps a smoke a lot. So very good for me um therapeutic some would even say but then at the end of the day I, I just kind of just ran for 45 minutes yeah but that's that's still 45 minutes of just pure meditation I and mean, it is nice to be able to do something that you can like go on autopilot to do mm. you know uh back whenever i used to work the line that's kind of what i would do like i would be on my position i would be like just flipping bottles flipping Air rinse, send down the lane. Flip, air rinse, down the drain. Like, it was just... The thing. You know what I mean? Like, I would just kind of check out. Like, uh... At the time, they used to let us, like, keep an earbud in. Like, one. Like, we could hear everything going on around us. So, if somebody was like, Wow! And, like, had to, like, stop, like, stop the machine, like, we would be like, Shit. You know, but... I was listening to Sea Shanties really heavy. So, like, I was doing all this, and I was just fucking heaving and hauling. I was fucking, uh... Wrap me down in carry balloons. Yeah, <laughs> legit. Like, it it was nice. Like, I, obviously, I couldn't work to that slow of a beat, you know what I mean? But, like, straight up, sometimes I would try to see if I could do, like, double time with it. You know, it's like... <laughs> or I'd be like, one, yeah, two, yeah. I would try to do that, like, and see if I. Can. I miss I miss working on assembly lines. Those, those those are actually, they're monotonous, but they're way more fun than like your typical everyday job. You would, yeah, more fun than you would expect. Now, if I were doing it for thirty years, I don't think I'd be having that much fun. No, probably not. Like that's one of the things about working the dock. 
like working uh, whenever I went and worked for that transportation company. Um, I would I, I was just kind of checked out. I was just like I would pull in, like pull into the trailer, look, see the pro number, be like, okay, look through my bills, scan it, gotta go to this trailer. There's three skids. The three skids are right here. And uh, try to load them effectively or efficiently, you know. Yeah. And then come back. Once you finish your trailer, it's like, all right, I'm done. You go back, get another bill or get another manifest. And they're like, hey, yeah, go get this other trailer. And you're like, all right. And you do that again. And a little while later, you're like, hey, man, I did that. And he's like, well, there's this trailer that just came in from Memphis. And then you go. Memphis I, trailers were the worst. The people that worked on that dock, like the trucks that were coming from that dock, they didn't give a damn how that shit left. At first, I was like, oh, man, this driver drives like shit. No. When every trailer is coming back like that, it's not the driver. It's not the driver's. They're just hucking shit. Yeah, no. Like, I would open the trailer, and I'd be like, wow, that's 1,500 pounds about to just fall. It's like that is a fucking like ten thousand dollar skid that is about to eat the dust. Like, are you kidding me? We we become a little more careless at my place where we're we'll be like transporting um boxes and cases and stuff. We've eventually come down, it's been so busy that what we'll do is we'll just we'll just straight up just start chucking boxes. And we we're we're heaving. Like the, but like them that are full of liquor, right? Oh yeah. The thing but the thing about those is, those can take a way more than people think. You know what that is? No, not way more than we think. We work with it. But you know what I'm saying? Well, kind of can't. But like literally, if you if you drop that, almost every single one of those are broken. I'm not even getting you. Like they're 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 cardboard boxes. They're not like package boxes boxes they're not package boxes they're regular cardboard boxes with with flat cardboard dividers to separate them so if i miss a catch almost every single one of the product is going to be broken maybe two will survive maybe if i'm lucky okay so i've just learned something very interesting Because like I remember when I was working in the warehouse, there were times like that like a case would slip, and like yeah I may like try to like catch it like and like soften it with my foot or something like that on the way down, mm. but there were times that a case would full on from my chest to concrete floor, and every bottle survived. Yeah, most no. of the time for me, N- not us. Like every now and mm. then, like we would have like a bottle or maybe two bottles break. Yeah, no. Uh, if, if our bottles drop, they're they're done. Now, like the whiskey bottles, maybe. They might survive. Well, them bottles... They're whiskey most bottles. Most whiskey bottles in general, most or most liquor bottles in general, are thick as fuck. Yeah, they're they're not... They're not... Yeah. That's how, that, like, that's how uh, the little shooters that the company I used to work for, uh, like, their little shooter bottles were invincible. Like, if you dropped one of those cases like you didn't worry but like i mean obviously you would check right make sure nothing was leaking if you broke one like we'd be like congrats you fucking lations like you won the lottery because you get a raise happens. it's like this is amazing i don't know what you did don't ever do it again but like they take a picture of the like oh my god it's like this happened but for real for real um i was freaking out because i like i dropped one of those cases like oh my god and uh, my boss at the time, you know the guy, he was like, don't worry about those bottles breaking, like the little 50s. He's like, don't worry about those. Like, but but they're little. It's like, they're, they're, they're little in glass. Like, they will shatter. He said, no. He said, do you want to know how stout or how, like, insane these little bottles are? I said, how? He says, okay. So he goes over, gets an empty bottle, right? Gets a little empty 50s bottle goes over to our box truck which was empty at the time right like it was waiting to be loaded he says watch this and dude full on like like 
chucks this thing and it goes like bounces all over the wall and lands on the floor and was gorgeous. Now this wasn't the 750s. The 750s you couldn't necessarily do that with. Of course not. But our little shooter bottles, invincible. Yeah, no, ours were not. Ours are very much not that way. Um, so that that's that, like we we've become more efficient by doing it, but the dangers far outweigh the productivity. The high the high risk, high reward. Basically, and we I mean it's it's me and Christian, so like we're already first off we're getting gains, so we're getting bigger, we're getting stronger, so like we're able to fucking yuck that shit, and so. It's like 15 pounds a case. Maybe. Roundabouts. Probably. I'd say probably. The way that it feels. I don't know. I can't really gauge weight at the moment. I was just saying that's like, but that's what, that's the. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying doing. to figure out how to gauge weight now, now that I, I'm officially getting into it. Cause there's, there's times where we have to like invent machines whenever we're doing workouts. Cause sometimes we just don't have what we need. Uh, so we have to invent it. But, um, yeah, no, and he's just we're just whoop, just chucking them, loading them up on, onto a little on the little cart so we can wheel it over and go put them on understock. Just yep, yep, yep. Uh, that's that's how that's about as dangerous as it gets around here. Because if one of those pallets falls over, put it this way: oh, if a pallet falls, you're done. Yeah, but so to to put how I'm not gonna say how cheap our product is, but how unreliable it is. How cheap your glass is. Our product in general so we we keep everything in pallets um for some of the drinks especially some of our more premium items uh we we sell cans right so we sell these cans and someone takes a, a dull knife dull knife cuts open the tops so that we can remove them they fucking sliced open one of the cans through plastic wrap and a box and gashed open a can and the whole thing was fucking ruined how dull was this knife i because like so i could have stabbed myself with it multiple times and had no results yeah. now which part of that could have to do with how like how the pallets were wrapped like were they Maybe. wrapped securely well yeah well it didn't fall it was from him cutting it open like what? Like that's what I mean. Like, was there copious amounts of wrap, or I think so. Yeah, I don't really remember. But yeah, no. That that's that's how bad some of our stuff is. We. But here's the thing, though. Here's the nutso thing. I have dropped so many bottles. Everyone drops bottles, and some days you'll drop it, boom, it'll land flat, perfectly fine. Other days it'll fall. It'll bounce off of your toe. Which hurts like a bitch, by the way. Speaking from experience, it'll do a sick little little Olympics somersault and then just beep and just Shatter. explode. And I'm just like, I literally just watched your brother tank the ground and was perfectly fine. Why are you the weak link? <laughs> if he's so mad. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's insane, man. Like, really. Um, I get so frustrated about it because it's like, first off, you've already wasted so much, so much time of my time because now I have to go and get a mop bucket. I got to clean the whole thing up and it's already bad enough as is. And now I got to deal with this crap. It's like, you know what? That's it. I don't want to deal with it. And that was something about the place that I used to work at. Like it, it breaking a bottle was so, just so annoying. I remember there was this one time I uh, was on the forklift and getting a pallet from the top rack, the racks, and shit was pretty high. Now, I was still kind of getting used to doing all that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I was still semi-new, um, but, like, I wasn't that new, so, like, I was just kind of getting comfortable, just getting comfortable. Which is not the time you want to make a mistake, but usually that's the time you start making mistakes, you know? Um, and I hoisted this, I picked this pallet up, and I leaned it back, and I was about to start. Oh, now I remember. The pallet was a little bit shorter, or 
the backboard was cracked or something. Like something was wrong. Like we had a shit pallet. And when I went in, the forks poked out a little bit further. I went in too far into the pallet. And I had caught a little bit on the board behind it. So I was trying to like free it. And I got, like, I was trying to, like, lower it and back it out and all this other stuff. And I hoisted it up, and I was like, come on, come on, break free. And I hear, crack. And it breaks a little bit of the front board on the other pallet, which, you know, like, it's it's not a big deal as long as you're not breaking the, stuff, breaking the product. You know what I mean? Right. Like, pallets took damage. That's just how it goes with pallets, transportation. Pallets, pallets took abuse. Pallets always take damage. Like, they, they get it because... If they don't get it in the warehouse, then they're getting it once they get on the trailer to go to these transportation companies. Because people on a dock, they care about getting product from A to B. They don't care about the health of the pallet. The pallet's not what they're shipping. They're shipping the shit on the pallet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, um, I was like, oh, fuck. But then it like went up a little higher and heard a little cling. It's like I fucked something up bad. Everywhere else in that little area of the cage, you know, there was just ceiling, like plenty of room of ceiling. Like it would have taken you a while and the ceiling wasn't hard, right? It was just insulation. Um, but there was a metal beam up top. And when it freed, it hit that beam and I lost one bottle. One bottle cracked. It didn't shatter, it cracked. And it started leaking. And I was so mad. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? But that that is best case scenario. It is best case scenario. Listen, when it comes to warehouse and forklifts and shit like that, anytime that like a little bit of product is lost, that is going to be your best case scenario. Because worst case scenario is your forklift tipping over. Uh, let's see here. A 2,000 pound pallet coming loose and crashing down on you, killing you, you know, like... The which ra- has happened before. Which has happened like, before. <laughs> like, this, there are so many things that can go wrong that you well, never yeah. think about. Well, so, the times that I worked uh, at a factory, I worked at Ball Metal Pack. Hated that job. It was... They had us working 12-hour shifts of monotony. Literally any other job I could have been fine with. And I, could, I couldn't do anything like listen to music because it was really loud at all times. Yeah, you had to have hearing protection. Had time. to have hearing protection. And I mean, the job wasn't, it wasn't a bad job. Um, it wasn't the job that I signed up for. I signed up for quality control, but they didn't want to put me in that for some reason. So they had me on body making. So that is where you will load up the two ends of a can into two separate hoppers They will go into a little feeder. They will weld to the can. Done. That job, best case scenario, you drop one or two of the little lid ends. Worst case scenario, as you go to load it into the hopper, where your hand is, where your finger ends, everything from that above falls. We had developed techniques to getting the wrap off. So one was paper. That one, super easy to get rid of, right? You just take it, open the bottom, shoop, whoop, take it. There's this fun little thing that was right above it where it sucked up and it took it to a little recycling area. That thing was my favorite thing to do because you just, whoop, whoop, and just just sucked it up. Best thing ever. Um, But then on the other side, it was um, wrapped in plastic. For some fucking reason, for some unknown, ungodly, unrelenting reason, it was wrapped in shrink wrap plastic. We're losing the camera. Here we are. But you take it, you pop the cork. So basically, the only way that I can really explain what it was like was you would slip your fingers. But you would boop, shoop, and it would come off. You had a 99% chance of it working perfectly. That 1% really set you back. Because these hoppers are on a rotator. 
and you load up the rotator so that it goes down to the to the to the panel where the hopper will eject it and send it. If you fuck that up, you have to grab everything first off, make sure everything's not dented, load it into the hopper. Well, actually, what we what we usually did was we just picked everything up with a magnet, just chucked it in the trash. I won't even lie to you. They, that's what they told us to do to help keep up with stuff because all they had to do was just take that, recycle it, use it again. I mean, the time the time that it would take you to like check everything on there was yeah. more than the like they they would make more money with you just throwing it away than they would lose with you throwing it. away. Yeah, and then oh, it's going. It's ready to go. Well, TikTok. Hope you have a nice trip. See you next fall. Um, but, uh, it's wild to watch. It is a little weird. Lie. Um, but, uh, it was, it was actually a pretty cool job. I just hated working 12 hour shifts all damn day. And the, the company didn't care about their people literally at all. Um, goodbye. Farewell, TikTok. There it goes. Here went TikTok. It's all right. We're almost, we're almost out of this anyway, say, but we're, we're about to, we're about to review this here in a few. Yeah. Um, it was super cool because you you never ran out of what you needed. That was the best. Because you be like, you would you would radio it in. You'd say I need so and so on on plot two or or something like that, and they would just take it in, and then they would bring it in. But the coolest part of that was is sometimes you didn't even need to call it. They had a, they had a guy who was up top on quality control, who would check to make sure the cans were fine. If they if you saw that they were running out of pallet. Boop, boop, two buttons. Announcement. New palette. High tech as shit. Dude, that's awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. We we must have gone through like five pallets of each a day. And these had thousands, thousands of ends on each pallet. It was a lot. But it was super cool. Unless you made a mess. But anyway. I remember being on the bottling line whenever I'd need new, whenever I'd need like more glass or anything because like we would stack more liquor on a pallet than we would get of a then we would have a pallet of empty glass right um so we needed glass frequently here's the kicker to get the glass you needed a forklift you know who had the forklift the distillers <laughs> who were doing their shit so like we'd be bottling and we'd be like hey hey Need, need a pallet of glass? They're like, you know, like sometimes they would set a couple pallets down at the time. At the time, they could do that, you know, because uh, there was space in that area. You know, so whenever we would need glass, we would just, you know, it's like, we're, hey, hold on. You know, we need to, like, stop the line for a minute while I go get glass. Because, I mean, we had, let's see here. One guy. What is happening here? Oh my God! TikTok can't see this. But, uh, <laughs> and he's just working. And he's just working the fingies. Um, maybe four people. Whenever I was on the line, now they need more than that, you know, because productivity. Well, better line. Um. But, you know, with four people on the line, you had one person doing like two or three things. Right. Nine times out of ten, I was not that person. You know what I mean? Like, uh, at the time, our good buddy Chris. Our good buddy Chris. The, our boy. The, yeah, our baby boy. That, you know, that uh, fa faithful man. Which, by the way, thank you for game sharing with me. And also, I need to play soon. Also, I fucking miss you. Anyway. We miss you. We miss you. But, uh, yeah, dude, he would, he would run the filler. Like, so he would run the filler, like, he would tap the things. No, we had... You're reminiscing too much. Four or five people, sorry. Five people. This is too much, too many numbers. Well, usually there would be someone on the corner who would, like, make sure that the bottles were facing the right way when they would go through the label. Um, but there were times that 
he would work the filler and the corner. So he would run a fill and run over there while they were going through the capper and adjust them and then send them through so they could go to the labeler before they get to quality control. <laughs> right? And he was fast as shit. Like, he was ridiculous at that. Like, I remember, like, doing my thing and then just seeing flashes of Chris because he would be there for a second and then he wouldn't. And then he'd be there for a second and then he wouldn't. And it was just like... And he, I was like, oh my god. Dude had mastered the fucking instantaneous movement. <laughs> he just fucking... Yeah, for real. Like, and he's just... Buttons. Settling shit. You know. All that shit. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what would be really fun. Is if... If I got back into the gig that you were doing... And we would both do that winter work together. I think that'd be some fun. I had winter work. Well, I'm saying that that's what your winter work is. Yes. Yeah. I, I would I think we'd have some good some good fun out there. We would. They would see a level of productivity that is rarely seen in today's time. I think it would be I think they would have to tell us to slow down. Right up. I don't mean to toot my own horn. But buddy, when I'm when I'm on the clock for like a purpose like that, I'm working. So I, I Whenever I'm doing something mechanical, I'm all about it. I I am productivity is is what my job description is. But now if I'm working retail, anything like that, I could I could give a shit less. I could give a shit less. Because everyone else is doing what I'm already doing, and some people don't want to do what I'm already doing. They're being they're getting paid the same amount that I'm getting paid to do, and they're not doing it. Yeah. So I don't want to do it. I don't want to deal with it. So my productivity in a storefront is not as good as it would be in a factory. Yeah, like things on the back end. You want to know why I feel like it's a whole lot easier to increase or it's a whole lot easier to have a better work ethic on the back end. Because we're men. I was going to. Okay. I mainly mean caveman brain. Yeah, caveman you, brain. It's because it's like, it's because once we get logged into that, we clock out. We think about yeah. nothing and do the, our job. It, it's but, it's the best thing about it. So I don't care what anybody says. The best thing about a man is the fact that the second you get us onto a task, we do it. But here's the thing. We don't do it to do the task. We do it to go to our favorite place. The favorite place in every man's mind. The nothing box. You've seen that video. You've seen that guy fucking talk. The nothing box. That, dude, it is ever since ever since he's talked about it, I cannot stop thinking about it. Like the first thing that happens once I go into said nothing box, my brain immediately does the whole thing where it's like pulling the tape off of a box and opening it. And the angels the angels chorus is opening and singing and the heaven's light is coming out as I open this box. And then I jump in and it's just quiet. Yeah, because there's nothing there and you just sit and exist. Yep. You just clock out and you exist. Now You're full autopilot. I will say work it like working in the warehouse. I wasn't able to clock out as much as I was on the line because I was having like it was constant numbers and like trying to the reason I loved it is because it was like working a puzzle. Right? Because it was like, how can I make these numbers work? How can I like I would plan out every pallet on that order. Like thousands of cases, different numbers. And I'd be like, I know that we can fit this many cases on a pallet. They are asking for these. These products are close together in here. They want full pallets of these. All of these things to add up to that number. And it's like, and there's going to be one odd pallet that's going to be a pain in the ass to wrap. And there, here is your odd number right here. And that's going to be the last thing I throw on, on top of these three flavors that are, that are smaller numbers. Got it. And like, I would spend like maybe 10, 15 minutes... Not not even that. I'd probably st spend like ten minutes total planning throughout the time of me building this order, because, and I wouldn't plan out the whole thing exactly because, like things can change. I would usually plan it like every couple pallets, and depending on how the hands that I had. Like if I had more hands, because like the line was 
needing to be repaired or something like that, some of the bottling line people would come and help. You know, and I'd be like, okay, number one, I got to keep them doing something so somebody doesn't come and grab them and tell them to do something that's worthless. You know what I'm saying? Just for right. the sake of having them do something. Like, but see, whenever I work warehouse or I work anything like that, even if it includes numbers, whenever I worked at the at, at Ball Metal Pack, like that was my favorite job to do without being plugged in. And there was a lot to do with it. Like, of course, you know, loading the hoppers was one thing. But whenever I was on quality, having to check the cans, ch- inspect the cans, make sure everything was right. I had to like yank one up, look at it, make sure there's no weird printing errors or anything exactly. like that. My brain, it is, and I could easily pick one out and be like, oh, that's bad. Yeet. And load it all the way up, send it. My brain is an enigma. I can, my productivity goes through the roof once my, once my, my, my little happy place is found. And I'm just in that, that spot where I'm, I don't know, I'm thinking about what anime I watched last night and oh, just reminiscing on stuff. For sure. Just, it's just there where you're just, you don't. You don't think about today's problems. You just exist. Dude, I turned into an animal whenever I'd go to my nothing box. Like, seriously. It, because I'm a, I'm a robot. <laughs> because what I would do is I would be like, okay, here's how I'm going to do these pallets. It'd be like, be like 40, 40, 60, like 40, 40, 60, 20, 20, like shit like that. And I'd be like, okay. So I would hop on my forklift, get my pallet over to this one, like over to this one thing and I would just start stacking. There's my nothing box. And like, I would have a pallet built like in no time. And they're like, why are you moving so fast? And I'm like, I'm just not thinking. No, I'm, I just ain't thinking. I'm just working. Look at me. I'm sure fix it. Sure fix it. Sure fix it. It's still my favorite character. That is, he he will always be. You know, you know what the the inspiration of that was, right? What was the inspiration? Cowboy. 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 Are you dead ass kidding me? You're right not gonna now? catch you and you fucking lift me. Oh no, sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no lip you fuck. Oh no, the sheriff. <laughs> Just slow zoom into that. That that was that was his inspiration. I told him specific. He was like, he's like, I want you to do something kind of funny. I want to do something. I was like, have you ever seen Auntie Dawn? <laughs> I was like, I need you to do this edit. He didn't do it exactly the way that we wanted it to happen, but it's he he did what he could with what he had. Actually, I already told you this, but tomorrow, well, today, uh, after I go to the gym, I'm probably going to Greenville to go and do some uh, some test shots to see what we're gonna do with that. I can't say. Obviously, I can't explain too much, but this is going to be his, um, his, uh, his shot at making a horror film. Is he? Never mind. We can talk well, about it off the air. Well, I was gonna say you you can ask a question. I can tell you whether or not I can or can't answer. Uh, can you tell me whether or not he's making it for a festival? He is not. This is something completely freelanced, and best part about this is he's graduated. So he doesn't have to follow any of the rules that they give him. Oh, that's right. So he can take a job and whatever that like as long as they're cool with him doing whatever, he can do it. Well, here's the thing though. He's he's producing this. He's, he's put, producing he, it's on his dime. This is this is on his dime. But here's the best part about that. So in any of the films that we've done thus far, Run Soccer, uh the the little short films that we've done in between, we have not been allowed to do any kind of stunts at all Fair. some simple falling not allowed literally tripping and falling not allowed I'm no stunt coordinator but I have done stunts in my day so I was fully prepared for multiple films that we've done for me to just eat shit and just get the shit kicked out of me something like that we were not allowed to do that for his college classes However, now you're allowed. Now we are 100% full reign. I can do whatever I want, which is awesome. So this film may be better, better quality because we can actually get down and dirty and do what we need to do. But anyway, we're, we're running along on time here. So, uh, Alice, I do have to ask you, 
what do you think of our yeehaw beer uh oktoberfest well, let me get a sip of it because i want to make sure the taste is fresh while i review this favorite air rate it um i'm actually going to give this a four a four a four which is remarkably better than last time Remarkably better than the last time. Um, for many reasons. Uh, it is full body. It is a, it has a, uh, full, like a full flavor. Like I feel like I am drinking a beer. It is accurate. I, I kind of have to go into the, uh, well, to the marketing on this a little bit as well, because remember whenever I read the can earlier, Allow me to um, find the part that is really getting me here. Uh, toasty flavors mingle with the ever so light hot bitterness. That could not be more appropriately described because like you do get that bitterness. You do get that hop, the hops on the yep. end of it. And it like, I feel like that does like nine times out of 10, whenever I'm like, ooh. This is really hoppy. You know what I mean? That's one of the reasons I don't drink IPAs all that much unless I'm trying to get shit-faced. Um, is because I don't usually like that bitterness. The bitterness on this actually kind of holds hands with that flavor that we're getting with the, like, with, like, it's, it's amazing. Like, it's not too, like, it's not like this is piss. You know what I mean? It is... There's a little bit of a sweetness to it, which is kind of odd. And the sweet and the bitter are kind of doing this little nice little tango. They're dancing together. They're holding hands and hips. And, I mean, I it, it I feel like I have drunk a beer and a half. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not drunk by any means, which you'll find out about that. But if I were to drink all of these, I know where I would be. Um, But... I have to say it it's also because like I'm able I'm able to pace myself really well with this like at first whenever I cracked the second one part of me wanted to down it and I almost couldn't resist but I was like I kind of want to like have a good conversation with my buddy you know what I mean it is it's a very conversational drink it, it uh, is it wasn't like I noticed that like while we were talking I was just Smacking that thing out. Yeah, like it it is very much like it it is very it very much it is brew. Brew. And and for that I have to I have brew. to give it a four. Brew. Um I I would have given it a five, but the really the thing that's holding it back from being a five is Well, I feel like, and it's not Yeehaw's fault at all. The thing that's holding it back from being a five is because, like, this, this I guess it's just not usually the kind of beer that I drink. Which is fair. But for what it is, it is amazing. But as a regular old beer drinker, plus, I think it's kind of a commitment issue. That's why I don't want to give it a five. Because I don't want to get too committed to this for them to leave us for a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sure. Yeehaw, you have absolutely killed it with this. I am very proud of this uh, this this drink that you've made. Uh, even though I had nothing to do with it. But drink, it is a phenomenal beer. Y'all out there, I recommend this beer. If you like, if you like a hearty flavored beer, if you like a hearty beer, this is your, this is your drink. Uh, now, Derek. Yeah. I have to know. Yeah. I have to ask. Yes. It's drinking time, but 
let's articulate let's let's dial in on your clock here um where does the uh blah. so i'll give this i'll do the same i'll give it a, a fair last swig Whenever it comes to narrowing down what I can taste, right, it's not as bad as Samuel Adams. It's not as bad. It's not good by any stretch of the means to me, personally. I, like we've, we've, we've discussed this many a times before, I am not a beer guy at all. But... I could probably say without a shadow of a doubt just for what this has given me and the fact that I, I I'm I'm not completely disgusted by it entirely like last week's was I would say probably about a 3 to 315 cuz it wasn't bad the only reason I almost matched you on a 4 I won't even lie to you like it was predetermined I was going to I was going to call this a 4 but finishing the can was horrendous. When you drink a lot of it, the hops kind of takes the lead, and that's not the hops roll. Like, I kind of got that on that little swig there. I done cast my die, so my die lies where it lay. Or well, lay I mean, like, lies. I'll talk about, like, on the very bottom, where everything kind of settles out, and, and it's been sitting there, breathing, and it's, it's, the elements are taking to it. It changes the flavor sometimes. That last bit of the flavor was not pleasurable at all. Like, I would drink two-thirds of the can and chuck the rest of the can because that last bit was awful. But it, it wasn't... It's not something I would constantly want to drink. For some reason, America's favorite beverage is just not my favorite beverage. I'm a liquor guy, through and through. Love liquor. And that's fair. Liquor's what my love is. And ciders. Ciders are also great. But there's just something about beer that I just don't enjoy. I think it might just be the bitterness. I'm not a bitter guy. I, I, I do enjoy black coffee, which is weird. Like, I love black coffee. But this, for some reason to me, is just a no-go. Beer has never been something that I'm very appreciative of. Uh, I'm more of a sour guy. That's where my palate sits. Mm. I love sour things. I used to eat sour things until my mouth would bleed. But this right here is just, it's its that, that area where you just kind of, you you can enjoy it. And you can drink while you enjoy it. Yes. Like I said, I was smacking that thing out, just listening to him talk. And I never do that. I never do that. I'm always just, I'm, I'll be drinking on occasion, and then on occasion, I'll go back to the drink. On occasion. But this one, I, I was able to just, I was rounding him out. Uh, he beat his can first, and then I slowly came up behind him. That's, that's how decent it was but 315 is about about where it's going to sit for me and i think that's where they're all going to sit whenever it comes to any kind of beer unless they somehow wow me because i mean the the pbr did which blows my mind i still just can't get over how the, that is the beer that got you the cheapest quote-unquote nastiest wine or beer i mean by by no means i i don't want to i don't want to out pbr like that because pbr if you buy it from a can, buy it in a can, it's not the cheapest that you'll find. It's pretty cheap, but it's not the cheapest you'll find. But if you go to a restaurant and you're like, "Did I get a PBR?" It's probably going to be one of the cheaper beers that they'll give you. And yeah, I'm so glad that that is one that you enjoyed. I wonder what that would taste like on tap. It is so much better on tap. I want to give that. A, we might have to give that a try sometime. With me working out in the mornings now, I maybe I should be able to go out and drink more too, which is which is good for me too, because that means that I can get back to having a social life. <laughs> I lack that right now. But Alex, yes, I feel like we're pretty on the same standing here. But um, what are you wearing? It is. March morning in the city. I don't have the normal job that I have. 
for this job. I must rest at least, at least semi-professional. You talking three piece? I'm talking three piece. That's that's formal. I'm talking. Hello, hello, Marco. Yeah, hit him with a little Marco and some khakis. With the chicken strips, with the hi. I'm rocking a nice little polo with some khakis. Uh, nothing like too much. I'm not like over here like, oh my god, you know, this top button's really killing me, and I gotta wear a tie. Oh my god, you know. If you wear a tie with a polo, we can't talk anymore. I was talking about like, you know, yeah, three feet, you know, but well, what I was gonna say, well, if I ever see you with a polo and a tie, we can't talk anymore. No, I can't no, associate we, with you. We ain't doing that, chief, but. You know, I got me a nice, I got me a nice polo. Nothing like, and the and the fabric, it's a very comfortable fabric. You know, like it's nothing like uncomfortable. Very breathable. Yeah, I've got I've got like the top button undone and stuff. You know, like we, we've got some breathing room. Um, as I said, it is a March morning. It's a little chilly. Um, you know, it's a little short sleeve polo, but my but my khakis, they're they're a little thick, but they're not uncomfortable. You know, they're well worn khakis. Um, I've got me a nice pair of shoes, um, and, and I'm ready to go to work. Uh, it, it's, it's very much a humdrum day. By no means am I, am I naked. I'm not in these outlandish scenes that we have once painted, but I am, I, I'm comfortable. I, I, I'm okay. Like, I'm not unhappy, but I'm not soaring. Now, if I were to drink like I usually do on this podcast, you better bet your sweet ass that I would, you know, be fucking toga streak. Toga, I, no, I toga. would be streaking in a football game with a flag out my ass. That is what would be happening right now. Um, because it, it is a drink you can feel. It's just... it It is able to be re- enjoyed responsibly amongst company so well. And, um, really and truly, it's not a slight, you know, you don't have to be zooted but naked to enjoy a drink, but it is not a slight in the, in in the slightest against this drink. It's just what I'm wearing is a normal humdrum good day, good day. Like I'm ready to have a good day at work, um, on this drink, uh, ready to be productive, ready to make that money, get that bread so I can get more of this beer. What it is. Fair enough. Um, now... Slugger. Yes. I have to know. Little Bullbuck. What is what are the garments that thou hast to dawn thine I'm in the pumpkin patch. It's mid fall. Not any typical fall. Like the ones we've been having the past couple of years. But this fall. Where it's already reaching thirty two degree weather. For some fucking reason. I'm wearing a bit of a thicker jacket. Maybe two. A windbreaker on it. Standing amidst this pumpkin patch, and I see the perfect pumpkin. Perfect size. I pick it up and I raise it like Simba gets raised to his new kingdom. And I say, You shall be the one. You shall be the one. I take it home, I scalp it, pull off the top, gut it, I stick the guts into a bowl and put water into the bowl, I shuffle the guts around so the seeds rise to the top. If you didn't know that by the way, you could do that. I take the seeds out, I lay tinfoil onto a pan, I put the seeds Mm -hmm. onto the pan, I salt them and I toss them into the stove. And as those are cooking, I create this beautiful masterpiece. But I get so caught up in my work that I forget that I'm wearing a heavy jacket. All this work is making me so hot and so sweaty. So I shed all the way down to my t-shirt that I'm wearing now. Which leads on to the next part of the segment. You yanked this down. We got pumpkins. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't say that I am zooted but naked, but I, I just drinking it and putting it away the way that I did, I started to catch on to a buzz for a second there. But 
as soon as I'm done. I say it's a really beautiful night. So I take the seeds out of the oven, put them in a nice little jar. And I sit out, putting my coat back on, sit out on my front porch, and just enjoy the scenery. This is out in the country. So there's no light pollution, no nothing. Just looking up at the starry night, just snacking away on some plants. Sounds really fucking good. Yeah. I remember when I used to. I worked uh, at a boot place. I made pumpkin seeds. And I fucking put those things away at work. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm pretty well clothed. Uh, for a second there, I was starting to get there, but then it just sort of wore off, so I put it right back on. But I'm going to leave you guys with this here. Uh, phrase of the day. Uh, we were talking about it. Uh, we enjoyed the whole uh, alternative words and their meanings. So I decided that we're going to go with the phrase of the day. We're going to go with word of the day, but I couldn't pronounce it. So we're going to leave that alone. Uh, I think it was uh, pneumatic or mnemonic. Something around those lines. Uh, but we're going to go with the southern phrase of the day. If the creek don't rise. Uh... We'll be there unless something out of control stops us. Which, fun fact, uh, I, saw, I saw this on a TikTok, which I don't know how true this is, but it's this older guy that like talks about Southern phrases and stuff. Mm. He said that the the earliest time that some like that that phrase was used was when uh, somebody who was dealing with. Um, Native American relations early time like early time in the country uh, had written a letter to George Washington um, saying that he would be at this convention like this meeting if the good lord willing and the creek don't rise with a capital C which meant we'll be there the good lord willing and the creek tribe doesn't Stop them. But you can also use it, uh, which I, how I always used it whenever I was younger, uh, was if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, you know, if the good Lord's willing and it doesn't come rain and river divide flood and keep us from, you know, being able to drive there. Yeah, that's, that's actually was this right here. I, I was wondering if I was going to say that. So it says, uh, we'll be there unless something out of our control stops us, which still goes in tandem with what you were talking about. Uh, we'll do our best to keep our promises, but sometimes unforeseen circumstances come up, like trying to meet a friend for lunch, uh, but but having the car break down on the way, that's a bit extreme. Um, to to cover your bases, you might say, I'll see if the creek don't rise. Uh, it's a way of saying you fully plan to be there or get something done as long as nothing out of your control stops you. Absolutely. Uh, that's, Which is good. that's the meaning. Uh, we threw in a little bit of history with that. Uh, some southern uh, parables you know uh, y'all before we before we adjourn I have to tell you this with that with that phrase uh, be sure to look up the old Johnny Cash song if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise um, which is about him wanting to go meet his girl uh, and he says if the good Lord's if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise I'll be there you know hmm. uh, so there we go guys wonderful drink wonderful phrase fucking wonderful episode might i say um y'all uh thank you for listening uh be sure to like comment subscribe if you're not in the discord and you want to kind of get in touch with us mm, be sure to hop in that hoe also if you have any ideas for any drinks that you want us to try be sure to hop in that hop in the discord let us know um, there are some suggestions in there that we need to, we, we do we need, need to try. It's just, I, I wanted to start getting onto that as soon as possible. The thing with it is we just gotta get a lot of liquor, you know yes. what I mean? which it doesn't even mean we have to get a lot of liquor. We just have to get a handful of shooters. We could do that well, and make some. I, I was going to say, I think we can get, we can get the drink, make the drink that they wanted us to make and then rate it off of that. Start rating their drink because we're, we're kind of neglecting it at this point. And also I need to get Belmo. Belmo needs to be a thing. I'm still working on it. I have not gotten the motivation to get Belmo up and running, but Belmo will be a mug and or t-shirt. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Belmo will exist. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not in a week from now. But eventually, I will get the motivation to make Belmo. Absolutely. He needs to exist. Um. But yeah. 
subscribe. Yes, please. Uh, and y'all, uh, thanks for listening. 100%, you know, uh, we do this not only as therapy for ourselves, but we also do it to, you know, maybe create something that might be able to help y'all down the road and, you know, provide you a little bit of entertainment. So we really thank you for hanging in with us. Now, y'all, with all that being said, I do so rectum that uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Man. Man.